Here we have a 40 inch Samsung LCD TV, it's an LE40 A656, it's one of the few Samsungs you get today, which actually has a Samsung panel I believe, and under there is the Samsung logo, so very high quality LCD panel, it's unfortunate the rest of the TV doesn't live up to the quality of the panel, because, well I got it faulty, um, of course, uh, plugged it in, um, the fault described by the user was the uh, power LED blinks intermittently on and off, but nothing further happens. Um, apparently, Curry's little comment technical support d diagnosed as a starter motor fault. I don't know if these have somehow failed mechanics or something, but uh, well, there sure isn't a starter motor in a TV. The only thing I can think of is the motor is a fan, because there's a fan for the 100 hertz motion interpolator, which. Uh, it's pretty powerful bit of chippery there. Um, anyway, upon opening it, it really wasn't difficult at all to spot the fault. You've got two bad caps. Now, I've had this thing fired up, and it will fire up if you heat the caps with a, hot, um, with a hair dryer. Um, these are roasting hot, they're painful to touch. These ones aren't hot, although I will replace all of them because they're all the same Samwood WB, they're one of the worst capacitors in the world. I've replaced a lot of these, probably not quite as many as cat picks on, but still lots of them. And they're right next to a bloody hot heatsink, so. <laughs> and this is Samsung quality, of course. You spend a lot of money on a Samsung TV, you don't get high quality. You get about, you get a bit better than a supermarket TV, but it's not much better, really. Um, so, anyway, I don't know if it will do the fault now because I've had it warmed up. Anyway, plug it in, see if the fan spins. Now, on this one, the power LED blinks. Will it fire up? No, no, it's, it's having difficulty. If you have a look at the fan, you might notice it slows down. When, yeah, can you see that? I don't know. But anyway, I'll just go and get the hair dryer and we'll... So, I'm pretty certain the caps are the issue. So what I'm just going to do is going to take this hair dryer, it's an ordinary, normal hair dryer, nothing special about it. And I'm going to plug the TV in because I just unplugged it. I'm going to see does it give the fault. The LED just blinks. You see that from that distance. And the fan kind of whirs a bit on and off. So I'm just going to get the hair dryer, heat it up. It might take some time. For mine, it first took about two minutes to get it going. There. Oh, brief fire up. Not quite managed it that time, but almost there. There you go. So, hair dryer will get a TV going with bad capacitors. So, uh, now once it's started, it will usually run fine. Um, but those capacitors really urgently need replacing. You'll get probably three or four more times out of the hair dryer. Uh, some people say like they block off the cooling on their TV and it works better, but it's just an interim thing. These are two capacitors are definitely very odd and they really need replacing. Very loud, isn't it? Right down the alley there. It's just Olympics on at the moment. Um, so, uh, the replacements I'm going to use is probably some Panasonic FM, Rubicon, Chemicon, Nishicon. Certainly not going to use the original Samwa. Must remember to use low ESR caps. Maplin, Radio Shack, Tau. Do not sell low ESR caps, and you will just open your TV up in another few years to replace them. So, replace them with decent quality capacitors that will last 15, 20 years. Um, on this particular make of TV, this T-Con board also can fail sometimes, giving a weird effect green lines on the screen. You still have a picture, but there's a faint green lines over it. And that's about a 20 quid board, so uh, if you have that issue, then it's probably that board too. And the main board, I've never seen a failure of that, but I wouldn't rule it out. And I've seen a lot of people get firmware corruption issues or something on these TVs.
Yeah. You might, um, if you have a multimeter, very handy piece of kit. Really got to have one for TV repair. Um, you can then find the 13 volt, which is, I believe, this one here. And you may, it's actually a 7.8. So the TV is still working on it, but it should be 13 volts on the about. Um, and these capacitors are probably 16 volt rated, so they're filtering the 13 volt line. There is absolutely no need to upgrade the voltages of these. Samsung, it's a, it's a theory that Samsung is voltages rating as too low, but they've done that, these TVs would have lasted one month, not 13 months. Or conveniently one month past the warranty. Yes, anyway, that's how to fix a Samsung LCD TV. Enjoy! Just as a little aside, when you're testing voltages on a power supply, uh, for this Samsung here, so this is not powering up, Can you, if you watch the supply voltage there, and we know it runs at 11.8, so 12.5, that's not great, but then everything starts switching on in the TV and you see it, it's 11.09 and then the TV shuts down because it doesn't like that, it's too low. Um, this cap here I think is possibly the 5 volt cap, so, because uh, it's 47010. So where's the 5 volt rail? Um, there, it's 13 to 16. So, just to count up. Uh, 23, 21. 19, 17, 15, so this will be 5.3. So that's, that's alright there. Is it going to drop out? I don't know. That seems to be alright. So it's probably the 13 volt that's the biggest problem for it. As, although that cap's going to cause problems later on, it's probably not part of the equation for now. Um, you can actually see the fan. Uh, this should be clear on this video. You see, it actually basically stops. It's hit slow there. It. So here I can stop that, but. There, it stopped. And it'll power up. So it's just cycling on and off. And on older Samsung TVs, you used to click because of the inrush limiting relay. But these don't even click anymore, so you don't even get an indication of that. Um, also, I've never liked this Samsung design. They're just kind of chop the top of a fan. It's really dodgy. It clumps up with so much dust as well. It's got a bloody popper fan on it. Anyway, I digress. It looks really dodgy. I don't know if they ordered that in or just chopped the top of it. It actually looks like it's been cut to me. It's hard to tell. Anyway. Having a scope can be very useful for troubleshooting because you can probe things like voltages and waveforms. Now here I'm probing the 13 volt. That's the one that's really bad. And you can see the ripple on it is outrageous. It's nigh on, I think, 200 millivolt peak peak. But also, look in standby. The ripple is, just when it's like shut down, see the ripple is still huge. It's not capturing that spike. and. Looks like it extends a bit higher, but my scope can't quite capture it because it's above its frequency band, which is 20 megahertz. I have another scope coming soon. Uh, yeah. So anyway, let's go now. Camera's full.